Ron Holland, who also found himself in the Bulls lap in a new mock. That one courtesy of The Athletic. Shout out. And uh, Josh Robbins of The Athletic had some thoughts on Holland and the Bulls, saying Holland would give Chicago a potentially elite tone setter on the defensive end, someone whose motor never stops. That aspect of Holland's game is a sure thing in a number 11 in a weak draft. I think the Bulls would jump at the chance to add someone who has those skills. Make no mistake, a high motor is a skill. Preach. I'm sure Big Dave would agree. Oh. There are questions about the rest of his game, efficiency, shooting, on-court decision-making, but that's what trigger warning player development is for, and it would be on the Bulls and on Hall himself to make those gains in the years ahead. Uh, and on the specs of Ron Holland as a wing at the NBA level, 6'6 six, six and a half, 197, and uh, a nearly 6'11 wingspan. Also, by the way, has a 38-inch max vertical. Mm-hmm. Um, I do really like Ron Holland. He'll be 19 on draft night. Played with the G League Ignite last year. Uh, 21 and a half points, almost seven rebounds, three and a half assists, two and a half steals for 75 possessions. So, uh, really dynamic defensive player. Really gets after. He's got great size, great length, great athleticism. Where he can like be that big wing stopper that everybody in the league is looking for. Yeah. Um, the questions with him are his ability to score. He was, uh, and shoot, I would say in particular, um, he was put in a position where like coming out of high school, I believe he won like three state championships in Texas. He was like a power forward that was like an elite defensive player, elite mm-hmm. tools, elite athleticism. And then going to the Ignite, they kind of put the ball in his hands a little bit more mm-hmm. and tried to see what he could create offensively. He got hurt um, and the, the season just went really poorly. So he did not like play very successfully um but he does have i think some self-creation chops and that's why some people feel like he can potentially be that two-way wing that everybody in the league is looking for yeah. in the mold of you know some of the the bigger wings Kawhi, paul george not comparing him to those kind of players but just in terms of his style and archetype i think that's kind of what you're hoping for if you bring him or if you draft him in the top 10 so uh to me you know, and he's been working out with teams from the Blazers to the Lakers, to the Heat. Like, it does seem like his draft stock is sliding a little bit to where he could be available at 11. I believe, um, according to my consensus mock, he Flex. is at 11 right now. So right in the Bulls range. And I would be super thrilled with him. I think he's the kind of upside play that the Bulls really need to, to take here. And, you know, even if he doesn't hit, I think he's a great athlete who can get downhill but the question about his shooting and his jump shot, obviously, is going to be kind of a, a big question mark going into the draft. Very true. Um, well, obviously, Matt had alluded to, you know, I love the motor uh, on this young man. Uh, it doesn't stop. The defense will get him on the floor every night. Like, his defense is outstanding. His footwork is outstanding. Um, he is a problem. And what I also love, Will, and Matt, about this guy is the slashing, mm-hmm. the cutting that he does. Two dribbles, he's at the rim. And he understands angles. And that, again, lets me know he's a smart basketball player. His IQ is pretty high because he understands the angles of which he needs to take to get to the bucket. Two dribbles, and he's there. Mm-hmm. And and that's what's exciting to me. Now, again, the ball handling is, uh, isn't great. He needs to work on that. I do like the fact that he did have the ball in his hands a lot. So he had to showcase what he could do. So the scoring you saw was good. The rebounding was good. The three-point shooting is not. I believe it was 28 or 26 or 28 percent or something like that. But it wasn't great. But it doesn't look like he can't shoot. You know, when you sit and you watch him uh, taking his shot and everything. But just that aspect, though, his ability to cut and his off ball, like, He's, he is definitely that extra pass guy, meaning if that ball gets dumped into that center and he's cutting, that extra pass that will happen to him is an easy two points because when he gets that around the rim, it's a bucket. There, a, team, a guy like Vooch would love him. You know what I'm saying? They would love this kind of guy who's always constantly moving and getting to the bucket and slashing and has that high kind of motor like that. He has – I wish I could put it inside of Patrick Williams because I, I would mean, be even more excited about it. But I really just like his motor and I like his skills and his versatility. So Ant saying in the comments, we keep drafting the same players that have upside in shooting. If they can't shoot now, don't draft them. I mean, look, Peter Patton at least is proof that some shooting can get better yeah. on certain players who put in the work. Um Andrew asking, is, is uh, Ron Holland the high-motor defender we need to, quote-unquote, replace Alex Caruso? But so, to me, as I just heard you waxing poetic and, and very eloquently so, Dave, Thank you, sir. why you love Ron Holland, 
there was a name that kept going off in my head. What's and that name? name is Dale and Terry. Mm. When you look at their measurables, they're pretty freaking similar. Mm. Uh, I think Dale and Terry measured like just shy of 6'7 at the combine. Yeah. He weighs like 195 pounds. And he has, Dale and Terry, a near seven foot wingspan. Mm -hmm. These dudes are very similar in frame. High motor, slashing, always active off the ball. True. He shot 24% from three. He did. I, the difference that is Dalen is a, a facilitator for sure. And his frame. You know what I mean? Like Holland's frame is physical. You know, he, he is a slasher and cut. He gets inside. He's going to battle, and he's physical. Dalen uses his, and it's fiery. You know what I'm saying? But when he gets that ball, he wants to run that transition and start the break and do those kind of things like that. I don't think that's a bad comp, though, because the numbers and the length, you're right, kind of add up with that. I think they're, like, completely different pedigrees mm -hmm. of prospects. Like, I mean, Ron Holland was – on a lot of boards, the number one pick coming into this year. That's true. I think he's got way more upside to be able to like be a primary scorer. Um, whereas Dalen, I just like, I, I, as we've talked about, I love a lot of stuff that he does. Um, but I just don't think he has that same kind of upside that Holland does. But obviously there are similarities there that I think make sense. Mm -hmm. It's just, a, I think a matter of like the type of pedigree that Holland came in with of being this guy that could potentially be the number one overall pick. Whereas Dalen was like a sophomore who kind of was a late riser into the first round on right. half night. And, and, you know, he had a near 27 usage percentage with the G League Ignite, and I don't know if you could say that Dalen Terry was ever that, like, heavily involved in, in what his team was doing offensively at the That's collegiate true. level coming no, into the draft. He was right. not. Even, you know, maybe uh, on, like Dalen Terry does not, has not found his three ball, sh you know, shot yet, but he has shown – um, in his previous pre-NBA levels that, that he's a, a very capable scorer in other ways. Yeah. We all silly like the mayor. 